Welcome, welcome, welcome to each of you who is gathered here in this space, and welcome to those of you who are watching in your homes, either now or later. We are so glad you're here with us today. I want to thank Deanne Diller for playing piano for us this uh, afternoon. It's just always a beautiful gift to our worship. I also want to thank Kyle Buller for being here and preaching for us this afternoon. Kyle uh, has been a pastor and he is a volunteer uh, here at the villa and so I'm quite sure you probably recognize him. And I want to thank Brian Kerr who is leading our singing this afternoon. You likely know that Brian is my husband but you may not know that uh, we're sharing our 42nd anniversary with you today. So, <laughs> woohoo! <laughs> You may also notice that Chaplain Jill is not here today, so she's taking some well-earned vacation, and she'll be back with us next week. So just a few other announcements before we get started. Uh, there is a hymn sing every Thursday afternoon in the Meadowlark Dining Room at 3 o'clock that you are welcome to attend, 4 o'clock, whoops, sorry, 4 o'clock that you are welcome to attend. 
Uh, Bible study in our building is on Friday mornings at 10 o'clock in the Blue Spruce Dining Room. Again, you are welcome to attend that. Bible study in Independent Living is on Wednesday mornings at 9 a.m. in the Hickory Homes Community Room, and that study is of the Book of Exodus. And for assisted living residents, I um, ask you please to fill out the questionnaire that you received from me almost two weeks ago about possible things to support you in your spiritual journey. And if you don't want any of them, that's fine. Say that and return it to me anyway. So I'd really like to hear from you. So please, please get those filled out and back. Our scripture this afternoon tells a wonderful story about Jesus and his encounter with a woman of faith who also had a deep need. The gift that God gives to each of us is the same one that that woman received, that we can come and reach out and know that we will be seen and heard by the one who saves us and makes us whole. Let's pray together uh, using the call to worship on the back of your programs at the very top. And we will read the dark print all together, and I'll read the light print, and then we'll join in. So let's begin. Lord God, we worship you, in whom we find health, and life and strength through whose gifts we are clothed and fed by whose mercy we have been forgiven and cleansed lord god we worship you be for us guide strength savior and lord all the days of our lives lord god we worship you and give you thanks amen We will sing number 25, Jesus Stand Among Us, hymn number 25 in the hymnal. Jesus, stand among us in your risen power. Let this time of worship be a hallowed hour. Breathe the Holy Spirit into every heart. Bid the fears and sorrows from each soul depart. Our scripture reading this afternoon is from Mark 5, verses 24 to 34, and you can follow along on the back of your program if you want to do that. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. 
Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Kyle, we look forward to your word. Thank you, Anita. And again, another congratulations on 42 years. Well, oh, my goodness. If I ever get married, I'll give you guys a call for advice. You can tell me how to uh, get through it all. You got the answers. Well, uh, I want to say hello. My name is Kyle Buller. Uh, it is great to be here with you today. Thanks for letting me come to, to worship and to bring you the word. It's nice uh, speaking. This is my second time speaking here. And I feel like I've made a few friends in the meantime before the, between the first time and this time. So I feel like I actually know some of you. So that's uh, always a warm feeling. So thank you again for letting me worship. And uh, let us just focus on the amazing things that Jesus does, uh, especially in this woman's life. You know, first I want to tell you about a, a road trip I took last year. Uh, I always enjoy road trips. I've driven uh, all over the country from California to Ontario, Canada, to back to California, to Kansas, to just everywhere. I, I enjoy it. It's something I like to do. And so I had a, a little vacation last year, and I decided to drive to Indiana. Uh, anybody here from Indiana? You, oh my goodness. Okay. So you will resonate with what I'm going to tell you. Not a whole lot there, but uh, I'll get to that in a second. So before I go on this road trip, my oil light comes on in my car, right? So I'm like, well, I better get it changed. I'm going to be driving forever. So I go in and I say, hi, I need an oil change. I'm going on a road trip. And so he says, okay, yeah, no problem. And they come back and they say, well, you know, we'll change your oil, but there's also this other thing that's pretty serious with the transmission you should look at. And I said, no, 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 I, I know how this works with you guys. You bring it in for one thing and then you end up spending... 500 extra dollars for something else that they say you need. I said, I'm not falling for it. I said, just the oil. He said, well, it's pretty serious. I said, just the oil, thank you. So he does the oil change. I take my car, see you later, just 40 bucks, not too bad, could be worse. So I drive to Indiana, all goes well. Uh, I've always wanted to see the University of Indiana. They've been a, a pretty big basketball school in the past, and I was a big basketball fan. So I made it there, and uh, when I'm in Bloomington, Indiana, in, in a uh, crosswalk or a big intersection, um, you know, I'm just sitting there minding my own business, and the light turns green. I'm about to head all the way back to Kansas. I'm at the end of my trip, and when I push the gas, my car shuts off entirely. And so I <laughs> panic a little bit because this has never happened before. People behind me are starting to honk, so I'm turning my car off and turning it back on. Thankfully, I got it going again, and I, I kind of got out of that little mess. And Bloomington, it's pretty much the only place where it could be busy in Indiana, and that's exactly where I was. And so I finally made it out, but on the way home, I think about five times from Indiana to Kansas, my car died, and I had to pull off to the side of the road. I wasn't sure I was actually going to make it all the way back to Kansas, but thankfully I did. So sure enough, I go back to the car guy on the Monday I get back in Kansas, and I said, hey, how's it going? He goes, good. He goes, how was your road trip? I said, yeah, you know that little thing you were talking about with the transmission? My car died. He goes, yeah, I was trying to tell you about that, but you didn't really want to listen. I said, yeah, I, I know. Just one of those things where you're like, just, just don't tell me how right you are. I understand how right you are. My car died. Do whatever you need to fix it. I brought my credit card. Just do the damage. Fix what I need. And you know, I think it's really interesting that so many times in our lives we go to Jesus and we tell him to fix something that we think needs his attention right away. But there's actually a lot of other things that we haven't looked at that need his attention too. And I think we're all like that. You know, we're, we all have a blind side to uh, some things that we do, we can always tell what other people do, and we can always see their faults in other people, but for us, it's a little bit harder for whatever reason. But Jesus does know. He does know. You know, in Mark 5, uh, we're looking at this incredible story, and, and Mark is a great book, especially when you're looking at miracles and healings. Uh, more than any other gospel writer, he speaks about these healings, about a third of his gospel letter is devoted to these healings. It's pretty amazing. Uh, much more so than any other. But just to set the context, uh, Jesus, he has grown in popularity by now. 
So in Mark 5, he's already healed people. He's already casted out a demon. And, you know, he's getting to the end of his day. He crosses the lake, hoping that he'll get a little bit of peace over there, maybe. He gets out, and sure enough, not at all. There's a huge crowd waiting for him again. This is pretty standard for uh, Jesus' ministry. He goes, okay, I've done a lot here. I might need to go get a little bit of rest, maybe eat, maybe go pray. And then, sure enough, more crowds come. And he never ignores them, though. It just shows you how deep his, his love really goes for these hurting people, because he's not so strict to an agenda. He always stops to help. And a guy named Jairus, a synagogue leader, he runs up to Jesus when he's walking somewhere with all these people. And he says, my daughter's sick and she's about to die. You need to go save her, please. He's on his hands and knees. This is a synagogue leader. And Jesus goes, okay, take me to her. Let's go. So Jairus, as you can imagine, is probably excited. Um, you know, his daughter's in this horrible situation. So they start walking. That's, that's what they're en route to. Go save this little girl. And it's at this point that this other unnamed woman breaks into the story. So, like it's very common, something else happens and Jesus doesn't just let it go. So this woman comes up, sneaks up behind him, and grabs his cloak. Now, I'm, I'm going to spoil the ending here. Jesus heals her physically, okay? We, we, we did hear that from the scripture reading, like many others, he does heal. But that's actually not the part of the story that really grabs me. As amazing as it is, the part of the story that grabs me is how Jesus decided to handle this woman in the moment. It's really interesting. You know, we're looking at a woman who has been through a lot. It says she's been sick for 12 years. Doctors let her down. It says she's actually suffered at the hands of doctors, so they, they made it worse for her. Um, the kind of sickness she has, her husband is well in the law to divorce her if he wants to, which may have happened. Her friends, her family, they could have all disappeared by now. She could be living in isolation. Things haven't been going well. Everything has crumbled in her life. And so out of desperation, she hears about Jesus and what he's done and goes, you know, this is my only hope that's left. There's nothing else she can think of. All these years of pain, she goes, I have to get near this guy and touch him. If he's coming through my town, I gotta go. So she does. She actually makes it to him, touches his cloak, and when she does, it tells us she's instantly healed. Instantly. She feels that. Jesus feels this power leave his body. Still no dialogue, no conversations, but it was instant, just from the touch. You know, I'm going to read this in uh, verse 30 for us here again. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? The disciples, are, they're kind of weirded out by that. The question doesn't make sense. He goes, you see the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you ask, who touched me? There's a lot of people who are touching you, Jesus. What are you talking about? It says, then the woman, knowing what has happened to her, came and fell at his feet trembling with fear, and told him the whole truth. In response, he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Wow. You know, when I read stories about this in the Bible, I, I really admire these, uh, these giants of, of faith. You know, they just, they lay everything on the line. She throws all her eggs in this one basket, breaks all these social rules, just to touch Jesus, hoping that he can do something that no doctors ever could for her. It's like her, her last chance. And she believes, she trusts that he can do this. He's this kind of guy. I got to be honest, in my life journey, in my faith journey, I wish I had that kind of childlike faith all the time. Uh, you know, I think naturally, I'm sort of a skeptical guy. As, as long as I can remember, I've always been a bit skeptical. I like asking why, how, prove it to me. How do you know that? Now, I'm just one of those why people. Uh, I, I don't know if you've been around a, a kid lately, a toddler, maybe a grandchild, but have you ever been around them and you know maybe a, a nurse comes in to give you a drink of water and they go, oh, why did she come in? You go, oh, to, to give me a drink of water. Why? Well, because I'm, because I'm thirsty. Why? Well, because I haven't drank anything in a little while. Why? Well, because, I don't know, you know, I'm just, it's just this why, why they just, there's all this kind of wonder and, and maybe a little skepticism too, but just trying to figure it out. There's a lot of curiosity. 
For me, maybe the word is even cynical at times, if I'm being more honest. But I have been a little skeptical when it comes to healing miracles in the Bible, because we see these amazing stories. I firmly believe Jesus did it, absolutely. But in times when it gets a little more personal, and I see people who are hurting, I can wonder why not like that. Like, for instance, uh, a couple weeks ago, I flew home to see my mom. Um, it wasn't under a, a great circumstance. She was having a little bit of a health crisis. Uh, she actually had a heart attack, and when she was in the hospital, she suffered a stroke as well, losing the right side of her body and lost a lot of her speech. And my mom, you know, she's, she's a woman who has been through quite a bit. She's been through two rounds of cancer, once when I was uh, a very little kid after I was born, and then about 10 years ago, she had a uh, heart um, surgery, and now this, and my mom, you know, she's, I can tell you right now, she prays a million times more than I do. She is, she is a woman of the Bible. She is strong in her faith. She, is, she reads it every day, uh, just so committed. She's in like three different Bible studies. I mean, she's just one of these women, right? And so I look at her, I look at God, and I go, you know, I know she's praying, and I know she's faithful, and yet it's still there. You know, why doesn't this look more like this, this Bible miracle? Why can't we see this a little more? And at times, I've struggled with that, uh, to be honest with you. But there is one thing that Jesus has shown me in my life, something that he has given me a lot of evidence of, even if I haven't found out that answer yet. And that is... Any pain that we have in our lives, whether we see it or not, it does not go unnoticed by God. All of the pain that we have in our life, whether we have seen it or not, none of that goes unnoticed by God. That is something I can say in personal life and other things. He is aware and he knows. No part of us is a mystery to God. You know, when Jesus heals, he really wasn't trying to be an entertainer just for shock value. We often look at these miracle stories and we say, wow, that's amazing. Everyone must have shouted, yes, hallelujah. And then you just kind of leave it there as if that's all that it was. But Jesus, he's so much deeper than that. He's so much wiser. There's always something deeper to these miracle stories. So why did Jesus stop this woman and call her out in the middle of everyone? She was already healed. So she already experienced that amazing thing. She probably could have just snuck back off. Why did Jesus stop everybody and make them look at her in this moment? Well, let's figure that out. First of all, remember, she's not supposed to be there. She's not supposed to be outside. She has to be terrified because all these people in the crowd, they could potentially get very mad at her for being out and touching them, which she shouldn't be doing. Maybe she thinks she's about to get scolded and shamed by Jesus because she stole power when maybe he didn't allow it. Who knows? But she is terrified, and this could be another horrible experience she's had, just another negative experience in her life. And Jesus says in front of everyone, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now, she would have just gone home and that didn't happen. She probably could have told people that she was healed, but I don't think they would have believed her. Maybe nothing relationally would have changed. But Jesus stops and goes, look at her. I'm calling her daughter. She is fully accepted by me and my family. And for all of you who are here looking at this woman, if you follow me, you accept her too from this day forward. Get a good look at her. This is my daughter. It was quite a shock for her, I'm sure. All she had known is rejection. And all she had thought about was a physical healing. But Jesus, his love, his care, his faithfulness for us, it goes so much deeper. He doesn't put band-aids on issues the way we try and make him put band-aids and quickly move past it. He sees all the other areas of ourselves that are affected, and he's after a full salvation. This woman needed a whole lot more than a physical healing that day. And Jesus was not going to let her just run off without it. 
Jesus didn't call her out because she did something wrong. He called her out because she did something right. She put her trust in him. And it did pay off. Just like you can take a car in for a quick oil change, tell them you don't need anything else, and find yourself on the side of a road in Kansas or Indiana or Kentucky or wherever else you travel to just because you don't really want to look at anything else. But Jesus knows the depth of us. You know, the Jesus that we know is very deep. We're talking about a God who came in human form to an earth that was very violent, that was very corrupt, to a place where his own people wouldn't even accept him. He knew this, but he goes, I want to walk with you. I want to touch you. I want to heal you. I want you to see me in the flesh so you know exactly what the mirror image of God is. I'm going to correct all these things. And in the end, I'm going to die a horrible death. And I still think you are worth it so you understand just how far I go to love my children, to love my daughters, to love my sons. This gives us a glimpse into those things. I will admit we may not know all the answers as to why this and not that. We may not get it. We may not understand all the timing when Jesus decides to heal. But we do know that Jesus does not ignore any part of us. And he is out for healing. And for that, we can have the same trust, the same trust this woman did to trust in the goodness of God. That is something I do firmly believe, that he is that good. Let's pray together. Lord, uh, we thank you that um, you see all of us, uh, parts that we don't look at, parts that maybe we're afraid to look at, but we're so thankful that you care. Um, we're so thankful that you want our whole selves, not just a piece of us, uh, not just the parts that are good, but all of us. You've proven redemption, restoration, deliverance in the most amazing ways, Lord, and when these miracles happen, let us not just be amazed and shocked at the, the physical stuff, but amazed at the big picture of who you are and how deep your love goes. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen. As a hymn of response, please to turn to number 377, Healer of Our Every Ill. 377. Grace us with your peace and gladness, spirit of all comfort, fill our hearts. Her of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. In the pain and joy beholding how your grace is still unfolding, give us all your vision, God of love. Healer of our every Light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Give 
the strength to love each other, every sister, every brother, spirit of all kindness, be our guide. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. You who know each thought and feeling, teach us all your way of healing. Spirit of compassion, fill our heart. Healer of our every Light of each tomorrow, give us peace beyond our fear and hope beyond our sorrow. Before we go to prayer, I just want to let you know that Catherine Herman, a healthcare resident from the West Gardens neighborhood, died early last Thursday morning, August 10th. And so we'll be praying for her family and friends this afternoon. So let us go to prayer. Our God, we praise you for your son, Jesus Christ, through whom we may learn to know you and love you and experience your salvation that is for the wholeness and healing of our whole selves. Thank you for loving us with mercy and grace. This day, O oh God, we lift up to you the world you created in love. We pray in sadness for the many ways that it is broken. We pray for the places of warfare, the places of natural devastation, the deepening divisions among us in this nation. Please, O oh God, teach us your ways that we may join your healing movement in this time. Our God, we also pray today for the family and friends and caregivers of Catherine Herman. Please sustain them all with your help and your hope as they grieve her death. We trust, O oh God, that you have received her into your presence and that she is now safe with you. Jesus, you who embody God's goodness, you know us inside and out, and you know what we need better than we do ourselves. You know our pain. You know our struggle. Thank you for accompanying us in it all, for restoring us in the ways we need it most for calling us your daughters and your sons. Most loving God, whose will it is for us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing but the loss of you, and to cast all our care on you who care for us. Preserve us from our fear and anxiety so that nothing in this mortal life may hide from us the light of your love, which is immortal and which you have shown to us so clearly in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. For, for a closing hymn, we'll sing number 59. Sing praise to God who reigns above. Fifty nine. Sing praise to God who reigns above the God of all creation, the God of power, the God of love, the God of our salvation. 
with healing balm, my soul is filled, and every faithless murmur still to God all praise and glory. What in almighty powers made God's gracious mercy he keepeth by morning glow or evening shade God's watchful eye ne'er sleepeth within the shelter of God's might lo all is just and all is right to God all praise and glory. Our God is never far away throughout all grief distressing and ever present help and stay our peace and joy and blessing as with the mother's tender hand God gently leads the chosen band to God all praise and glory then all my glad some way along I sing aloud thy praises that all may hear the grateful song my voice unwearied raises be joyful in the Lord my heart both soul and body bear your part to God all praise and glory. So I invite you to stay after the benediction for the um, postlude, and then you'll be dismissed. And our benediction this afternoon comes from Romans 15. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope and in wholeness by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>